Hello Linux lovers, welcome to my world. My name's Wimpy. It's good to be back. At least mostly back. It's almost working. It's almost all working. Hopefully, as far as you're concerned, it's all working just fine. Hello to everyone who stopped back again. It's lovely to be here. It's lovely to see you all. <laughs> yeah. So Esme, Kingy, Jit, Yannick, um, Eric goes by our podcast, Mix the Pick. Welcome back. And I also see, was it Orc Flight? Yeah, your new first time uh, here. Uh, welcome. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the game whilst we were bringing up the stream. I'll just explain exactly what I'm going to be doing this evening. I'm going to be having a go. I've made a Hugo website. We'll look at that in a minute. And I'm going to be integrating, hopefully, uh, a, the live stream into that website, <coughs> he says. Um, bearing in mind that I'm looking at the tools I'm using to do this and the YouTube stream not working at all. So that's a bit disappointing, but consistent with my account at Google being nixed yesterday and me having to do a full account recovery. So the fact that I've got the account at all is a good thing, but the stream integration stuff is clearly busted. So that's to be fixed another day. Right then. Hello, Paul. Welcome back. Welcome back. Musical Coder. Hello. Hello, Big Pod. Welcome back. Good to see you all. Uh, if I've missed anyone, I apologise. There was a few messages flying by there. So, hey, Brave Sir Jeff. Hello. Good evening. Welcome back. So, I've hopefully, I've hopefully picked a relatively easy, he says, easy sort of thing to ease back into, a simple task. So I've been working on updating my own website and I did that just before Christmas, I think. And of course, enough weeks have elapsed. I've completely forgotten <laughs> how it all works. Um, but I want to make a couple of changes. And one of the reasons why I've updated my site is I wanted to make it really easy to start writing articles again. <laughs> Thank you for the follow a WK flight. Hey Orc Flight, thanks very much for the follow. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Um oh dear. Thank you whoever dealt with the uh who's on moderation duty. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, um yeah, I'm gonna have a go. We're gonna look at the site. Not much. You don't need to look at it. It's I mean look at like how it's put together. We're using Hugo, uh the static site generator. And like I say, I'm going to have a go at integrating the live stream into the site. Um, just for funsies, really. Um, so that's what we're going to have a bash at. So that was you, Yannick. Cheers. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and Eric's on duty as well. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Luke offering your axe. Brilliant. Right then. <laughs> Thanks for the resub, Big Pod uh, You're all very kind. Thank you. It's been too long. I think, I think it's probably not telling me now. 91 days. It's been 91 days since uh, I did this on my own stream. A lot's been going on. A lot of good things and some knocks are great things. So went on holiday. That was a good thing. Went to the Ubuntu summit in Prague. That was a good thing. Then a not so great thing happened and I've sort of been on hiatus for a while and now Things are improving, so I'm back to this live streaming thing. In terms of my stream schedule, I'm going to have to think about that. I'm still going to try and do three or so streams a week, maybe more, but I'm not sure what times of day yet. This time could be more common, uh, but we'll see. So uh, that's the plan uh, for streaming, sort of, kind of. We'll figure it out. Um, going to be doing a bit more streaming, though, that's for sure. A lot more streaming, in actual fact. And although I'm going to be looking at the website stuff today, a theme for quite some time, I imagine, uh, I've I've decided to get off the fence about Nix. I've been talking a good game about Nix, but I haven't really committed to uh, that relationship. But I am going to go on a learning journey, and you're welcome to come along with me. So the subsequent streams, that's going to be a constant feature. I'm going to start at level one because I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm going to acquire some Nix skills and either you can come along and learn with me or better yet, we might pick up some people along the way who know about Nix and can actually uh, 
help uh, help with that um, learning journey as I go through the learning pit, as uh, as my daughter used to call it when she struggled with new topics at school. So um, just catching up. Uh, <laughs> So our podcast says, in fact, I've got the tools to do this. Let's just go back here. Ah, oh, the tools are letting me down. I'm gonna to have to do it over here now. One mini moment. I tried something new and that didn't work either. Always, always trying new things. I'm trying to get the stream to a place where I don't constantly fiddle with the bits and the bobs and then it's like, oh, this thing, this, I've got this new thing and see how now it doesn't work. So let's just let's just go up here. Let's find uh, what uh, Eric said because it's somewhere in here. Oh, well, colours are different. That's not helpful. Um, yes, here we go. Found it. So Eric says, "I really enjoy Hugo." Uh, oh, has Jupiter Broadcasting found a way to show a simple indicator when they go live on PeerTube? Ah, nice. Yes, you can see uh, there are stats for the Twitch stream, uh, and that uses Deck API, which is a simple way to get that stuff. So, uh, yeah, so PeerTube. I don't remember what that one is. Um, is that a peer-to-peer -peer live streaming platform? I am live on uh, somewhere else at the moment, not YouTube, obviously. Um, I say not obviously I, I was supposed to be but it's not working <laughs> right then so um and what was this there was another message popped by it looked interesting <laughs> paul m says did you ever get that ipad you were thinking about still lusting after ipads i i haven't got one um because reasons but i am still thinking about it uh i can't decide if i want an ipad at first and generously, it might be for my daughter rather than me, despite that I'm I'm the principal use case. Um, but also our Roku, Roku's are really aged, and I'm thinking of changing two of those to maybe Apple TV, so not sure yet. But yes, at some point, iPads are gonna feature. Right, uh, and our podcast has provided an explanation. For those of us that aren't in the know, PeerTube is a peer-to-peer -peer video streaming service. They sell post on Linode. Interesting. Okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, right, I, I'm going to have to just shuffle my desk around because that's not working for me. Right, there we go. So, oh, that's not working either. That's in the way of everything. <laughs> Let's try that again. Right then. Uh, let's have a look at what, what I've been working on. Uh, how do I do this? I'll push that button there. There we go. Uh, this is my website, uh, as is, and all of the various domains that I have uh, land here now. It's not finished by any means, but it's it's serviceable. It, it does the, the bare minimum. So uh, that's what... Um, uh, what it looks like and it's a combination of a very old website I hadn't updated since 2017 as I will illustrate in a moment and a sort of a personal positioning website that I had so this is it um, and it needs some work this doesn't work at the moment and I think that's a bug in the form hosting pro uh, thing I'm using yeah, thank you, Eric. I, I would like to take credit for it, but this is actually a well-known theme, a bootstrap theme called Freelancer. And if I go over here, uh, this is what I based it on. So somebody made a Freelancer template for Hugo. And in the process of making this website, I basically rewrote it because I ran into countless problems with it. So we'll just take a quick look at what's here. So these are the blog posts and these are things about the project. So each of the projects that I work on, I've put a little, um, you know, thing together so you can sort of learn about the project. These aren't finished. They're kind of placeholders, but you get the idea at the bottom of the site, all the places you can come and find me stroke us you know socials code stuff content in air quotes 
so Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, and then the podcast Linux Downtime. So there we go. Um, and I saw some other comments whiz by. Uh, <laughs> is that Archie? Archie, well, uh, well, welcome, welcome to the stream. Um, <laughs> leadership, I know, I know. It's a bold statement, Luke, I know. <laughs> um, what was it? Uh, hey, McPhail, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, okay, beer club night. Well, you, you hop along to something more important. All I've got here is um, uh, mango tea. Uh, although it's delicious, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, right then. So, uh, I saw somebody post something and I've lost it. I've lost it, I've lost it. Nice clean design. Here we go, King Egypt was talking about lovely sight. Who did the avatar? Okay. So, um, these, I do know the answer to that. There is a website where you can create these. <laughs> I, shall I find it? This will take a mini moment, but I can find it. Let's look it up. Uh, let's move that over here. Um, we'll bring up the site. And then you can all go and make your own, your own avatars. Here we go. I'm nearly there. Somewhere here, there's a link to where you make these things. Here we go. That didn't take too long. I found it. I'll post this in the Twitch chat. There you go. That's where you can go and you can make your own uh, representations of your good selves uh, using that, hopefully. There we go. Oh, I, I suppose, actually, I could go one step further. We could uh, we could do this. We could actually visit the thing in the, in the browser as soon as I have one here. So here you go. You pick the various attributes and you end up with an avatar and then you can uh, chuck it in your website or whatever. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know what you think. So, um, things that I changed about this. Uh, I did this blog post bit. So, I imported all of my blog posts from Ancient Website. And this was the last blog post I had on that website. Which was from... Well, the last update I made to this blog post was from January the 24th. 2017 and lo and behold it's about a retro gaming console powered by a raspberry pi of zero surprises to anyone who's been around around this channel any time recently i should think so um and i wrote a little script which generates these uh thumbnails to sort of add a little bit more of um visual interest to the site so all of this stuff is really old and so the other thing I did was um, used some Hugo code to detect how old the post is. And if it's older than, I think, three years was my cutoff, it will put these warnings in automatically to just sort of let people know you could be looking at old stuff. And then I moved over a couple of things I wrote on dev post as slightly newer things. Um, and the whole point is... I want this to be really quick and easy to manage and update. So Hugo's static site, the content is all marked down. So it's very quick and easy to write. And uh, it's all automated in um, GitHub workflows. And it's hosted on GitHub pages. So the site itself isn't in Wimpy's world. It's actually in my personal uh, GitHub over here somewhere um must be the top one there it is so this is this is the actual site um in terms of the hugo site uh the you know the raw code and this is the automation which comes pretty much a verbatim from the hugo documentation the only thing i added was uh, this here because I also front this site using Cloudflare um, to accelerate the edge, you know, edge caching. And when it deploys the site, it drops all of the caches on Cloudflare. So that's the, uh, the automation. This is where the code is. 
And the plan is we embed the live stream into it, at least. We hope to do that. Uh, and I suppose the other thing I should demonstrate is on this. No, that's not a good example. On this, which is an old post from December the 13th, 2016. As you can see, I was not a prolific blogger um, <laughs> at this time. If we go all the way to the bottom here, something else that I've integrated is these were all imported, but I was using Discuss for the comments on the old site. And I've migrated those all over um, into this thing called Giscus. And Giscus is an integration with uh, GitHub discussions to host comments on your static websites. So um, that's how it's all glued together. And the reason that I wanted a website where I could write easily again is, for example, Eric is here who I've done a whole bunch of sort of show and tell in the past around OBS and live streaming. And most of that conversation happens in our Discord. Um, and it's not very discoverable. Uh, so I'm going to revisit all of the OBS stuff I've done as individual articles, which will go on this website. And uh, and all the new stuff I'm going to be doing will also get like a, a little write up here and the appropriate live streams or videos will also get embedded here so it's easier to go back and find and reference anything that I or we as a community came up with to like find it and uh, learn from it so that's the idea and also it's where I want to write up my warts and all journey into the world of Nix because I expect I'm going to bump into a lot of hard edges on that transition from sort of an, uh, an Ubuntu world or classic Linux distro world into the Nix world and um, I think it'll be useful to maybe uh, catalogue um, the successes and the fails that, that I <laughs> encounter along the way. So there's been a lot of chat. I'm sorry I haven't been keeping up. I should try and uh, see this. So King Egypt says that Apple TVs are good. That's good to know. I'm hoping that it will be serviceable at least. Um, so, um, right, okay. So Eric makes a good point here. Uh, let me just flip over here. So Eric, who goes by our podcast because he does the R Lang podcast, says I'm able to integrate my site's repo with Netlify and I nearly did the same. Uh, so Netlify is somewhere you can deploy static sites to. Um, so yeah, I was thinking of doing that, but then I thought, well, I'm paying for GitHub Pro. I might as well maximize the, the money that I'm spending there. Um, so I decided to go with uh, GitHub because um, I think I said last year there was a few things I wanted to do. One was start that Nix journey, which I didn't do last year. And the other was to up my game with GitHub and GitHub workflows and automation, which I did to some extent, but I'm not like anywhere where I wanted to be with that. So I've decided to go with more GitHub stuff because um, I want to get more fluent with all of the tools that are available on GitHub. So I'm just looking down the link list here. So Paul says, uh, my site used to be Hugo, uh, hosted on GitHub pages, but went to WordPress. So it's interesting. I've seen a lot of people go back to WordPress after using like static sites. What, why did you go back just out of interest? Uh... <laughs> yes, Yannick, um, it, it will do. In fact, it's probably going to be FF135A. I did start making that change. There was just too many places in the CSS I needed to change it, and I ran out of time, so I reverted that, that change. But I did start uh, working on a different colour scheme. Um, pull requests welcome. <laughs> um, right then. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm missing any of these. I'm a bit out of practice with all of this. Uh, 
Ah, so we've got Eve. Eve, are you new? I don't. Yes, hello. Hello, Eve One Love. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So it says here, your uh, new Linux user, Kubuntu. Well, good for you. Welcome. Uh, one more of us and one less of them. <laughs> uh, Kubuntu is a fine choice. How's, how's it working out? Uh, being new to uh, Linux and all the rest of it, how have you find, found your initial journey? Uh, so this is what Eve has to say here. Um, Okay, console tinkering. Uh, first looked at my Wi-Fi dongle. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. LS USB. Okay, you're, yeah, you're, you're learning all the tricks early. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, I tell you what. So, um, Eve, um, what I will suggest, I'm not going to try and debug that live now because, frankly, I don't know enough about Kubuntu. But if I put this in the chat here. Uh, that's a link to our Discord, and we've got nearly 3,000 Linux nerds that are hanging out in there. If you come and drop in there and ask your questions, I'm sure somebody will be able to help you uh, find your way and solve uh, the problems that you've encountered. Um, we're a friendly bunch, so come and join. Um, right, let's try and get down this uh, little bit here. Okay, so Paul's rationale for switching back to WordPress is you wanted something easier to update. It's interesting because I wanted something easier to update and that's why I went down the static route. I, I was using Nicola. I say I was using, as you can see, I didn't actually do anything with my website for five years. Uh, but that was a, that's a static site uh, generator implemented in Python. And I think one of the reasons why I stopped writing stuff on my blog, well, there was two reasons. One, I've been writing stuff in lots of other places, either on the Ubuntu website or the Snapcraft website, or more recently, Slim AI, and also things like DevPost and what have you. Um, and then, you know, producing, uh, uh, let's call it, I don't like calling it content, it makes me feel icky but like the ubuntu podcast we banged out one of those every every week and that requires some effort so it's you know it's not written word but it's another place that you know content was produced and then the live streams as well but i need to get back into the discipline of writing things uh, down a bit more thoroughly and i'll show you the workflow in a little bit with hugo here and i'm pretty happy with it uh, yes, there is a great collection of Linux enthusiasts here, Eric. Right, I've shown you the site. The other thing I added was this, which just about works. So let's search for the word Raspberry. Uh, and this is client-side searching for the blog. So um, I'm quite happy with that. And that's really for my own benefit, so I can find stuff that I've written, because uh, I'm hoping to uh, get some more stuff up here. Uh, a lot more stuff, in fact. Right, okay, I'm just looking around. Okay, good, good. Right. Um, right, I've got a lot of stuff. So, I think this is all just about working. So, let's give this a go. Let's head over to VS Code and see if I can remember how to do this. So actually, if we just stay on here. So you can see here, there's a posts section, oops, which is a top level menu item and a project section. So what I want to do is add in here a top level entry called live. And I don't know if I'm gonna do it this evening, but I also want to add one called about as well at some point. And effectively, uh, this bit, the, the about bit here and the contact bit, I want to put in its own page because it just feels a bit in the wrong spot here. So I just want this to be like a landing page to find the most recent stuff. So I want to put live here and have that take you to, if it's live, <laughs> an embedded version of the stream. That's the plan at least. Um, and before I get on to that, I see Eva's replied. So let's just uh, hop over here. So Eve says, um, oh, hello. My, 
Oh no, the magic has stopped working. See? See you. I, th I thought it was going to work and it, it, it's not. It's stopped working. Oh well. Eve says, uh, I'm trying out Linux just out of curiosity. It's a good, good reason to start. Um, it's always good to learn new things. Yeah, KDE Plasma is a fine desktop environment indeed. I mean, it's no Chelsea Cucumber, but it's very fine. Um, at least uh, all the system logic isn't too different from Windows. Yeah. Oh, so you're using uh, Wired LAN to work around. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, uh, I wish you all the very best on your journey into the world of Linux. I hope that works out for you. Right then. Uh, and oh, hello, Phil. Uh, welcome back. I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. That worked. I wonder why the other one didn't. Hello. So Quattro looks very interesting. Another lovely discovery. Thanks to the Debget contributors. What's Quattro? I mean, I, I tell you what. Uh, I'm not going to go and look. I'm going to actually try and work on the thing I said I was going to try and work on in a moment. There we go. Somebody's got channel points, and there's the Chelsea cucumber. And for those of you that are new around here, I work on uh, Ubuntu Mate, and this is our glorious um, default color scheme. <laughs> the accent color is called Chelsea Cucumber. What is Quattro? If somebody can just fill me and give me the edited highlights of what Quattro is. Uh, right, let's get rid of that. So we're going to try and add live a new page and embed the live stream. And I think I've got, uh, we, I'm looking around now, where is it? Here, I've got off screen, I've got the thing which I think I can embed the live stream with. So, Adam, okay, Adam, uh, it must be a website making thing. So Adam, welcome to the stream by the way says I literally make a website right now in Quattro and got quite startled hearing about it well there we go so is that a static site generator as well hello Adam welcome welcome to the welcome to the stream so am I guessing right it's also a static site generator oh okay sounds quite all right don't worry about the caps it's scientific publishing software. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll take a look. So GetDeb is one of the projects from uh, the community here. One that is desperate for us to uh, give it some attention. So we will get to finishing, wrapping up some things. There's some other projects that we work on here that I'm going to pivot slightly as well. Uh, Quantum Garage, sorry. Oh, right, okay, uh, let's have a look. So Quantum Garage, sorry if I missed your uh, earlier thing. It's it's sometimes tricky for me to keep up. So, um, did you ever get the NVIDIA T1000 and AMD to work together, okay, in Linux? You talked about it last year. Using it right now, Quantum Garage, let me show you. You know what, this is just gonna become a just chatting stream, isn't it? Yeah, I can, I can feel it now. Uh, let's have a look here. So. If, oh, in fact, what am I doing? I don't need to do a new terminal. I have, I have a fantastic terminal just waiting, waiting to be used. Here we go. So um, I've built a current version of NV Top, and it supports AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. So if we run NV Top and just hide your comment there, you will see here that my GPU Zero is the NVIDIA T1000 right here and that my second GPU is a Radeon RX 6700 XT. And what I'm doing is I use the Radeon as my desktop GPU. The Nvidia card doesn't have any display drivers installed. It just has all of the compute and CUDA stuff installed. So this stream that you're seeing uh, here now is being composited entirely on the NVIDIA GPU. Um, at, so in, in composited and encoded and streamed all through the NVIDIA GPU. And the Radeon uh, card is being used to um, power the desktop basically. So I've been 
using that for some time now maybe since september time something like that and i love it it's terrific so you can see here that the nvidia nvenc is running you can see look obs is doing compute stuff and you can see offloaded uh, graphics acceleration stuff as well so there you go uh, the two work great and the trick here is don't install the display drivers for the nvidia card and that way you can just use it for compute and processing hello bj campio is that campio Cam campolo hello hello and welcome thanks for stopping by the stream <laughs> yes it's only a gnome it is indeed it is the t1000 is totally uh <laughs> the terminator edition yeah um i want to have go I, I was i nearly got one of the intel arc gpus to experiment with the same idea but using arc as like the encoding thing um so quantum garage says thank you you're welcome uh let's just look at your question here uh thank you for how it works is nv top available anywhere yes it is let's go and grab that um quantum garage what um distro do you use uh so what are we thinking it's nv top github that's what we want isn't it i think it's github Oh, you're using pop os then i have good news for you so the um source is on github just here let's stick that in chat just so you can hopefully grab that a bit more conveniently and i think i think i'm right in saying that if we scroll down here it will say duh, duh, duh. here we go uh Ubuntu PPA divided by whoever this guy is so there you go in the documentation that'll take you to the PPA that I maintain uh, and that's a version of NVTOP with all the GPU support enabled so uh, it doesn't uh, matter uh, what GPU you've got it will be able to give you stats and numbers from all the things and that's great because I used to have to use lots of different ones but now one tool for all of them <laughs> and um adam asks uh what is that terminal uh that terminal is as you correctly guess it is cool retro term i got that idea from yannick and also chris nova uh because it adds a little bit of visual interest when you're live streaming to have a terminal that's a bit more interesting to look at so yeah it's a cool retro term uh, i think that's probably being rendered on this thing somewhere as well is it uh can't... no that will be that will be rendered on the um no there it is there it is there it is down here look so yeah has the wave effect yeah i've i've tried to keep so i did go to town with the effects a little bit and I had some feedback from people that found it visually distracting or just too much. So I've tried to keep it somewhat interesting, but dial it, dial it back a little bit. Um, I've not seen Chris's stream in a while. I need to, I need to head over there soon and catch up. Right. Okay. <laughs> Quantum Garage, you're welcome. Uh, let me know how you get on. Cut, drop into the Discord. Let us know how you get on with all of that. Right then, so uh, I'm in the directory for, this is the directory for the site. So here's the first thing. One of the reasons why I liked Hugo, there we go, in fact that's what I need to do, is you run Hugo server inside a di directory that hosts a Hugo project and it will pass everything and start a server. So let's just go and grab this URL here and we'll head over to uh, a browser here. We'll just paste that in. If I, I'll leave this up just in case we need to go back to it for any reason. So there we go. That's my site running off the local instance of Hugo. 
So we'll just leave that there for a moment. And now we will drop, and this has got li um, live hot reloading. So for those Flutter developers amongst you, hello Yannick. Um, uh, same idea, you can you know hack this stuff around. Now I think in content, yeah, oh, I've got a live directory. Did I start doing this already? Oh no, I've just made the directory. So I've got a directory there. So that should create me the entry point for this. So let's do this. Let's see P. <laughs> oh, Thanks thank you. The resub King Egypt. Th uh, thank you to all of you that have been resubbing and using your Amazon Prime for that as well, by the way. That's very kind of you. And you do get advert free at least. So hopefully there's some value in doing that for you. But thank you. Um, Yes, uh, as as uh, Eric points out, Hugo is implemented in Go. So consequently, it generates the sites astonishingly quickly. Um, so we'll copy the index from the search to live. Let's just come back here. We'll, um, oops. What have I done? Uh, content, of course, I've just changed that the direction. There we go. So we'll change this from search results. So this is just a stub. The the What you would do here normally for a blog post, I could show one later, is after the front matter here, metadata if you like, um, you just uh, embed some markdown. But all we're going to do is just use this to create that uh, initial entry in the thing so live is going to be the title for the page the slug is the url effectively it will derive that from the file name but i've decided i'm going to be explicit in how i do these things and layout is like the um i'm going to say it's like the template it's not actually the template templates in hugo are like the whole site but it's the the page that has the Hugo logic and the HTML inside it in order to render that page. So we will save that. And if we go back here, we should now see that our live has turned up. It won't do anything. It will do that in fact, which is taking the standard template. Um, but as you can see, it hot reloaded and we now have live. So we should now be able to go, is it in the themes? This is where I, it's been a, enough weeks of elapse that I can't remember the uh, the process. So the freelancer is the theme and layouts uh, default. I think that's where we need to be. Okay, there. So it's this search. So um, if we just code single, this is close enough actually so this is some of the like the logic that you can use with Hugo and I added this um, myself because I learned it <laughs> and I thought it was rather nifty so um, if we look at what this icon is doing we're using font awesome here so if I go to the single page you'll see here how there's a star here and recent posts have the little sort of you know text memo Projects have the code symbol. About has the little person. Um, these this little logic blocks that exist in some of the templated code are basically working out which icon to embed in. Um, it's this bit here, I believe. So here's our little icon divider, and we just drop that, and it does um, some you know variable stroke string interpolate interpolation so that you can you know style or change contextually change what's uh, rendered on the site so that's a single page oh and here's my logic for the um if it's an old post you know calculate how old it is and then put um, different like um, alerts at the top of the post. So here's the alert for it's old. Oh no, this is the post for, um, yeah, this is the old post and this is the it's been updated because you can obviously edit the things over time. 
yes, uh, it's only a GNOME. Our clone is also written in. Our clone is an amazing tool. Um, that's something that I haven't made good use of. I, I know of it and I've used it a bit, but I should. You could do so much, or I could do so much more with it. Maybe I need to think about like using that for some off-site backup stuff. Maybe I'll circle back to that at some point in the year. Right, so I'm just looking at this, trying to decide if this single.html is a sufficient starting point for what I want to do. So we've got the hero thing. So let's go and look at a single blog post here so I could I suppose put the stream in that spot maybe or the projects hmm the projects one looks a bit I think that uses single as well but we won't need this we don't need the navigation pieces but maybe the projects one is what we could use here. So, um, is this the right thing or I think it might be. Uh, oh, the music stopped. I, I hope that's just the music that stopped. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like it's changing track. Okay. <laughs> I'm very twitchy about it. Oh, excuse the pun. Uh, the, this this is actually working because um, it's been a while. Okay, so have we got a distinction in here for whether or not we're displaying a post or a... So yeah, we have got the sidebar. So I think we could probably use this. Where's the, the piece that says whether or not it gets... Uh, well, we could just remove it. Okay, let's do this then. Let's CP single to live and then code live and just close single so I don't actually get confused and drop in there and start hacking that one. So the icon, uh, we'll have to go and go to font awesome, I think, and find an appropriate um, icon because I don't know what it would be off the top of my head. So if you're not familiar, Font Awesome is an amazing resource. It's basically a font that is a load of glyphs that you can embed in your projects. So I usually use something like satellite, um, uh, like this sort of thing for broadcasting. So which do we like the look of here? And we also need to say free and I get this choice. So we now know that this is called satellite dish. There we go. So let's copy that uh, and drop that in here. And this is a, oops, it took the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Let's just get rid of all of that and all of that there we go so i don't need any of this because this is only going to be used for rendering the uh things it says here if sidebar permissions then use the column equals that we'll leave that alone at the moment if uh so that's probably here where we could embed the um the stream maybe possibly uh, what have we got here the title okay that's fine this is our divider thing and then tags which I could put tags I could put tags actually I could do that so let's go here let's just save that and put some tags in here we'll have tags uh actually i can't remember if tags i think tags are done like this i think let's just do twitch and youtube for the time being let's save that 
go back to our live rendered site and see how badly we've broken it. Uh, live. There we go. Not too bad. We've got live. We've got our satellite dish and we've got our uh, tags, which are Twitch and YouTube. And I think I also do cate categories for... And I think I've got a top level category called broadcasting. But that isn't visible. It's just what goes into the metadata for the page. So if we do that, come here, reload this page and look at the page source. Um, is there a broadcasting in there? No, I might have. I'll have to go and check what the category uh, section is. So, hey, <laughs> yeah, there's some familiar faces. So, uh, Ned Bog, welcome. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Hey, hey, Gary, how you doing? Thank you very much for stopping by. <laughs> oh, you would have raided. Oh, that's fine. That's fine, mate. So, Gary uh, is a friend of mine and a co-host on the uh, Linux downtime. In fact, I think I've got a thing for this. Let's do this the right way. So, uh, is it just podcast? There we go. So there we go. It's in the chat now. So this is the podcast we do. And the last episode, which came out just a few days ago, we talked about live streaming, uh, code stuff, you know, the like what I am doing now. So yeah, Gary, this is the, the first one back. So thank you for stopping by. It's always good to see you. <laughs> and Ned Bog. Yeah, well, you, you obviously had a good time over at Gary's. I know he does. He does uh, good streams over there. A seasoned uh, Linux streamer. Right then. So I'm just updating my site just to ease back into this with something relatively easy. <laughs> oh, you were doing the state of the bird. Okay, nice. Uh, how'd that go? Because uh, uh, that uh, so for people that don't know, Gary is the. I'll just switch back here whilst we're doing this. So Gary is the lead developer of Pigeon, the multi-protocol chat client, and has been working for some considerable number of years on updating the code base uh, to modern stuff. In it. GTK3 being one of it, and all of the protocol support being uplifted. And you do these quarterly updates called State of the Bird. So you've just done that. And you've sort of announced your plans for this year and how you're hoping to get Pigeon in good shape uh, for or first alpha, I think. Is that right? Of Pigeon 3? I think that's what you're doing. So, yeah. It's good stuff. If, you, if you're a Linux nerd and you're here, and that's probably why you're here, then you probably also want to go and visit uh, this stream and give it a follow there we go <laughs> so that's uh, where you can find Gary so get followed over there right then where was I somewhere here I'll figure out that categories thing in a bit that's not important right now so what do we need to do what do we need to remove? We've got tags now. So uh, we don't need any of this. Don't need any of this logic because this is about old stuff and this is only going to be displaying streams. Where did that come from? So it's that div tag. Take all of that. Oh, we've got. So we don't need pagination either. So we'll get rid of all of that. So actually, maybe this is where I embed the stream information. Uh, I wonder if maybe I should try and figure out how to embed a thumbnail, even if it's static. Maybe this is what I should use this bit for here. A thumbnail. Yes, because there's the image class there. Okay. So no, we will use that for the thumbnail. Uh, we can, yeah, we'll just leave that commented out for the moment, but that's where a thumbnail can go, I think. That's what we'll do. 
And also, you've probably seen all of these tabs. At some point, I'm going to have to drop all of those. This is what I inherited from the original template, and I've been meaning to chuck them away. I can't stand tabs in stuff. It's only a GNOME. Um, oh, okay. So Gary's got an interesting comment there. This is this looks this looks encouraging. So Gary says it's only 24 known issues. Most of them <laughs> sized large or extra large. So 2024 is looking good there, Gary. <laughs> oh, man, gosh, okay. <laughs> 24. Boy, so if you know a bit of GTK, <laughs> GTK 3 and 4, then uh, Gary might appreciate some code contributions over on Pigeon by the looks of it. Um, and I have committed that when Pigeon 3 is available, it, it's going to be shipped by default in Ubuntu Mate. And <clears throat> it's only a GNOME says, what's that advert with the cat saying, I don't know, Mate? Uh, always makes me think uh, cats would... I don't know what that advert is. Uh, sorry. Um, no idea what that's about. I don't watch much telly, to be fair. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Ned Bog. Yeah, I think you're making accurate predictions for what's in store for Gary here. <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> right then. Maybe. <laughs> yes, Gary. Yeah. Okay. 2025. All right. Yeah, that sounds. That sounds like a reasonable projection. Okay. Very good. Right then. So let's. I'm going to just hop over here. I've got. I think it's just an iframe. Gosh, it is. So let's see what happens if I do this. Uh, uh, we will do two things. So, oops, let's get on the right virtual screen. So this is where the stream should go. That is the iframe that is apparently required. Uh, before I hit save, <laughs> I'm going to go over here and mute this site. <laughs> Because if it works, I don't want to create an echo back on myself. So let's hit save and let's go here. Uh, and well, it refused to connect, but some things, some things there. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I've definitely done the right thing. I wonder if this is because it doesn't like me using an iframe in uh, um, in Hugo. Or uh, is it something else that's wrong? I got some of these things turned off. Enable use to live rewind. Well, that, whoa, okay, I can't do that apparently. <clears throat> um, oh. Okay, right. I'm I'm just I've just unbroken things here, so I'm looking. It knows I'm live, uh, but I frame only code audio. So I wonder what I've got wrong here. <laughs> well, that's super disappointing. I was hoping that was just going to work bother refused to connect uh, hmm well bottoms what do we think do we think this is because I'm using a, uh, an iframe let's go and let's go and see if iframes are the boat oh no it shouldn't be this is HTML isn't it this should be allowed. Um, check the console, big bar. Oh, yes, big pod. You, you, you are uh, always, always got good ideas. Let's do something useful like that. Uh, right. Oh, here we go. Because the ancestor violates the content. Uh, oh, okay. No, that's fine. 
that's fine. So it doesn't work in my local thing, but it might work when I deploy it. Well, that's going to be fun, isn't it? There's no no way to test things and make it live. Okay, so this is a like cross-site protection thing because an ancestor violates the following content policy. Ah, right. I think I can configure that uh, the, in in my streaming platform. So. Whilst I'm here and we're talking about this, I am using some multi-streaming software. Uh, and I use this, uh, Live Push, um, because it's relatively inexpensive. <clears throat> um, uh, and it enables me to stream to Twitch. And although I'm not planning to stream live to YouTube it enables me to stream to YouTube multi-stream to YouTube and that means that the live streams automatically go into the live streaming category of my YouTube channel as opposed to being a video that I upload after the fact which just goes into videos so I can now start partitioning videos from live streams on the YouTube channel so that's the reason why I'm doing it, to save myself some time in the way I do the publishing to YouTube. We'll just close that for now. We're done with that. So how do I overcome this? I've seen somewhere I can type in this thing, app domains, here we go, aha. Protect your HTML5, okay, comma separated. local host can I save that is it just gonna is that saved there's no save button I'm, a, I'm gonna guess that that's done it what, do I, what happens if I do this now it's got on the right virtual screen no oh this updated though uh, hmm hmm well I've got a feeling like it's going to work if I push it. <laughs> so why not? Let's do that. Let's look at the let's look at the automated workflow. Uh, thank you, Big Pod. I think. Uh, uh, oh, hang on a minute. Big Pod's been saying things and I've not been keeping up. So uh, yeah, check the call. Yeah, yeah, okay. If that doesn't work, you might need to go yes and change it so you can yes, okay. No code on screen. Sorry. No code on screen. Can't. What do you mean by no code on screen? Add that to live push IO. What? I don't understand what your instructions were there, Big Pod. Um. We only saw the browser. Yes, I, yeah, I'm deliberately doing the changes to live push off screen because otherwise it exposes streaming keys and things, which I obviously don't want people to see. Uh, I don't mind people seeing the key to ingest the stream, but the URLs and everything are up here as well. Oh, I've misspelled localhost. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> that could do it, couldn't it? Let's try that again. Uh, local host is spelt correctly now why is it that that is it says enter domains separated by a comma maybe I tell you does it need does it need the port let's try that Well, I've tried, so you can see here, I'm putting the port in, you know, the things running on. So, no, I can't, maybe they've blacklisted localhost. So this is, I'm looking at a thing. I mean, how can I do this? Uh, I know what I can do. We can do this. Just so that I can show people what the heck I'm talking about. Uh, if we start this and do that, I'm just going to run up. Get, I've just copy and pasted the thing. 
So let's make you smaller and we'll paste that into GIMP and then we'll drag that over here like so. So this is what I've got on live push. This is what I am updating on live push. So I obviously put my domain name in there, copying what was down here. And then I've tried adding localhost without the port number and localhost with the port number to see if I could get it working in the dev environment and it does not. So sad face, but you get the idea. Um, anyway, what we'll do is why, why not push it? We, we, let's find out. Let's find out how broken it is. Um, there's no better way to do that than just push it live. Um, after all, it's not like this is mission critical or anything. So we head over to, uh, let's get rid of that. I don't need that open. We head over to the mighty, mighty Git Kraken. Uh, this is uh, what we changed. Not very much really, is it? <laughs> yeah, push it live, Mini Roach. That's the. It's a, <laughs> I'm going to get more disciplined about this stuff, but for this, it's uh, neither here nor there. So this is our entry to go in the menu, and here is our janky McJank face um, code. Let's hurl that in there, and let's do MVP live stream integration. Commit that change. Uh, gosh, it's been a while since I put that in. Yes, that's the right thing. So there's our commit. And if I push this, what we should see is if we go to that there GitHub, uh, one of mine, here it is. We should see that GitHub Actions are doing their thing. There we go. And that is now building the site. So uh, that shouldn't take long because as Eric pointed out earlier on, I've just moved back here whilst that's doing its thing. As Eric pointed out earlier on, uh, Hugo is very fast. Um, so let's have a look. I'm getting some, getting some feedback here. <clears throat> uh, I need to go over here. So yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, Big Pod, I suspect that it doesn't like local host as a domain. Um, I wonder if I could fiddle that by doing like... Um, uh, suddenly an idea pops into my head. Should we try this? Let's do... <coughs> let's do this as a really dirty fudge and see if we can get it working locally. Uh, so I'll just get rid of Big Pod's message here. We'll just kill the local rendering. Uh, yeah. We'll do that and do... <laughs> save that, exit that, run the Hugo server... And now go to where we were running the dev version. <laughs> and... No. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Okay, it was worth a try. Uh, I'll just get rid of that, otherwise I will get in a pickle. Right, let's go and see if that um, has finished building in uh, GitHub. So where were we? Let's just do local host again, get that back to where it was. Uh, it was this one, wasn't it? Are we done? Not quite, it seems. Oh yeah, all success, there we go. All done, deployed. So if we go to this site and hit refresh, there we go. So the live site now has live 
and I need to mute this now. The same reasons, because if it works, ah, bother. So that didn't work. Um, more tools. Yes, oh bother indeed. You need to set a server command. Yeah. Oh, maybe I need to get rid of... Um... <laughs> yes, Yannick. <laughs> that is the... It's the appropriate animation. Um, what am I thinking? I'm thinking go to this thing and change this and get rid of the local host reference in the domain configuration of this tool. Okay. Uh, um, try refreshing. No. I wonder if I should just do that. I'm just changing, I'm just tweaking the domain in these. Aha! How about that? Success! <laughs> in just a little moment, we're going to see me celebrate. Oh, no, it's quite a bit behind, isn't it? Crikey, is this how far behind Twitch is? No, it can't be. Okay. Uh, oh, this... Um, is not streaming anymore, but it, okay. It's cl it's close to working though. This is not far off, is it? <laughs> it's close, but these, th I, I mean, is this me or is this their thing that's not working? Let's try and uh, refresh this page again. Oh, there's, there's Yannick's O Balls. So this, this live stream embedded seems to be a long way behind and not working very well. I think I've done what I need to do. I probably need to go and investigate. Have I actually like paid for this? I don't know if I, I just assumed that this would this would work, but I don't know if it's like a cost option or something. But that's a good start. Okay, I'm going to consider that close enough. <laughs> Closing it enough. What have we got here? We've got some things that are blocked here. Maybe this is it. Has blocked. Oh. I've seen this before. I wonder if this is because I'm fronting it all with Cloudflare. I wonder. So, I mentioned earlier that on... Let's just... I'll leave that up for now because it's probably useful. On, in fact, the may well... I mentioned that this contact form isn't working. You know, you put your name in here and e ah, email addresses. Uh, I don't like what that's doing. Let's turn, uh, can I just, I'm gonna stop typing stuff there because that's doing stuff I don't want it to do. But that contact form isn't working correctly. And I'm pretty sure I saw that it was a cross origin thing. A bit like this is complaining out so I wonder if me fronting this with Cloudflare as yeah you say on my end though <laughs> big pod um, it's not Cloudflare so what am I missing then because you say on my end I'm not hosting any of this this is on github pages I've just got static HTML that I'm jamming in to get popped. Yeah. The end of your website. Yeah. I wonder what that's all about then. Hmm. You say it's part of my site. I, I, I'll i be honest. I'm novice at this cross-site stuff. So is there something I should be configuring in my site to overcome this? Well, I tell you what, it's close. I clearly need to go and learn uh, about uh, CSP. So maybe that is a 
an exercise for me. If uh, if anyone wants to hop into the Discord and <laughs> educate me on what I might be missing here, that would be dandy. But in terms of embedding the stream, that kind of works. Yeah, like I say, there's another thing that I've got embedded in the site for the form processing, and I'm pretty sure I saw a cause fail for that as well. So I will have to have a little research on that one, I think. Still, not bad, to start at least. I mean, I suppose the other thing I can do is as I know what to do with the page, maybe I'll make that other change because I did say I wanted to move the about page. So let's go and do that since uh, we think we know. And I'm not sure I want a thumbnail at the top of that because that's gonna push the video way down. So we'll drop the hero image stuff. Is it doing... Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it's sort of working there for a moment. Is it gonna fail again? Yeah, yeah, it's only working momentarily. Uh, so we will come in here. We'll keep all of that as it is. We don't want the sidebar, so we can remove that bit of logic. So that's fine. <clears throat> More opal section. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, Big Pod, I will find you in Discord and uh, after I've done some research and see what uh, uh, you can do to educate me. <clears throat> Big Pod's an ex-colleague of mine and he's annoyingly almost always right. <laughs> but very helpful to have someone like that on your team. Right then. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to do the same again but we're going to have an about page, I think. So what was this summary one? Yeah, that's not the one I want to this. Somewhere, is it basal? One of these has got like a whole, yeah, no, that's like the main page temp. Main, that's what it is, I think, is it? No. Hmm. I can't remember the structure of this, but some... Ah, oh, there it is. Is that one? Is it this one here? Code index. Yes, there we go. So let's try this. Let's CP index to the default layouts and call it about.html. Let's code default and about. And that one is not going to have posts and projects in it like so. And then the index page is no longer going to have the about and contact. Okay. And then I need to put the stub in place for the menu. Where did I do that? That was in content, wasn't it? So, we make about, we'll CP live to, live index to about, code the about stub, and call it about, whoops, about, and this one we probably want to bump up the list. So this, this is like where it appears in the site map and it also influences the weighting in the search results. So the layout is going to be about the category, don't know actually, but I've just removed that for now. And if we go to the locally rendered copy, which hopefully is still running around here somewhere, there we go. So now the home page is the logo, the posts, the projects, and that. And now we have an about page. Ah, oh, which I suppose we do want the other. Th I do want the pretty picture. So um, let's go and try and make that happen. 
uh, what did I so index huh so therefore hmm in main is that the bit that's got the displayer is it themes freelancer uh no index yeah what was it uh there's layouts and then index there we go no that's the wrong thing ah where is it what's it called um um That's in the CSS, that's not what we want. Um, just trying to think where that bit of code was coming from. Is it in the base? bunch of styling no ah oh, here we go no ah oh, header there we go that's where it's from is it that here or somewhere else header no come on where's where's header come from it's one our oh, partials that's it here we go it might be that or hero navigation yes hero here we go Hero. So it says if is home. Okay, so I remember something about this. I bet I can't remember the syntax to, to get this right. If is home. Uh, let's close the live stuff down. So I probably want to look at layouts single because I've got some logic tucked away in here. Uh, so I could do it like this, uh, but we have to do this stuff where you do everything inside braces like so. Like that, I think. So if we copy that and we go to header, no, hero, we can do if is home. Uh, is it or? I can't remember. I can't remember if it's or or pipes. I don't remember the syntax at all. I think maybe we have to do something like this. And then instead of posts, this is going to be about. Let's just see if that's rendered anything. Nope, didn't like that. So let's try or. No, I've forgotten. I've forgotten what the syntax is. Um, let's do grep or in themes. Uh, Looking for, yes, our podcast, I was looking for a partial. Um, else if that range. Can you remember the syntax for doing conditionals with ors? I tell you what, let's go and look at uh, Hugo.
Oh, that's right. You put the you put the comparator at the front of the statement. Yes. I think we're going to see. Yes. Here we go. There we go. There we go. So that's right. Uh, so it's here. And so it's now going to be if or. And those two. And I think I saw we didn't have to have the spaces there. So just do that. And now we'll go to where the page is rendered, which I it's over here somewhere. Yay! Oh, almost yay. Oh, I see, because we've got... So I need a... <laughs> mm. I need a different bit of... i tell you what, we can totally cheat. Let's do this. Um, this is the dirtiest of dirty hacks. I think that should do it. Kind of. <laughs> there we go. I'll uh, I'll figure that out another time. So there we go. That'll do. So there we go. We've got the about page. We've got the live page, which doesn't work. Definitely doesn't work in the local copy. We've got our posts and our projects, and the live front homepage looks like that as well. But we don't have our logo in those, which is correct. And we shouldn't have it in uh, individual posts. Yes, okay, that's good. We've, we've got that right. There we go. There we go. All right, that'll do. That'll do. So the live stuff doesn't work. Really? So I'll have to have a think about that. Hmm. I suspect this is why this contact page doesn't work either. So this, when you fill it out when it's on the local domain, again, this has got a site, you know, blacklist, whitelist feature on the thing. You fill out all the fields and then the send button illuminates and you compress it and it works. But when it's on the, this site, it does not work. So I will have to give that some thought. I'll tell you what I could do. I could invert the colors maybe on those and switch the order, but that will probably do it. Yeah, send doesn't illuminate, correct. And I think if you go looking, you'll find that there's a cross origin issue. I think I saw once, but like I say, it was just before Christmas and I didn't pay enough attention to what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've even emailed the, the service behind it and they've not replied. So I think it's on me to figure it out. <laughs> right. OK, well, that's not too awful. There has been some progress there. I will take that as a partial victory. Um, which is a step in the right direction, at least. Uh, right. Uh, let's get rid of that. Good, good. Right, I'm just closing down some unnecessary windows. So I will do a bit of research on the cross-site stuff. So, okay, it's not too late. This is good. Is there anything else I want to get into at the moment? Probably not. Maybe I'll push that change up, though, because that's... That about page thing is okay ish it's not too awful uh, so let's just get into the the mighty mighty git kraken and just push that up as well um, so what have we got here we've got about index yes ah so we first of all we tidied up the live okay so tidy up the live page So I'll have to have a figure out what's going on there. We will allow display the hero image. That's not my words. That's a web thing. Hero image on the about H2. 
and now we will add the about page. Ah, no, actually, yes, yeah, add the about page, yeah. And content from index. There we go. Okay, so if we push that up, it should do some things. Hey! <laughs> Who was that, King Egypt? Yeah, why is spending? Although, I've just noticed it didn't do the lights, which is odd. It, well, that was working the other day. It should make all of my lights grin, but it just turned those ones off and didn't do the whole under the sea lighting effect. Another thing for me to figure out why it's not working. Right, okay, so. I am desperate to get into the Nick stuff, but I'm also acutely aware that DevGet needs a release of all the new stuff, but there are bugs in it. So I need to catch up with Phil and Nathan and get that out and done. <laughs> hey, big calm, how you doing? <clears throat> it's been a while since I've seen you. We were just talking about the other day um, doing some hotshot racing because the online hotshot racing uh, multiplayer stuff is working again. So we were thinking about getting together and, uh, and doing some racing. Would you be up for that? <laughs> Sound, that sounds like a yes. Awesome. Uh, new tracks. I don't know if there's new tracks. Uh, I've, I've not actually been in and played it. I know Monica and Yannick have had a play. Um, but yeah, okay, well, uh, we'll tag you. Um, I'm not sure when exactly. We're not going to go quite as bonkers as last time. Okay, no new tracks, I think. But yeah, and Eric as well. Okay, so we'll get the band back together for some, for some gaming. Brilliant. I shall look forward to that. Uh, it's been far too long. It was a shame when that multiplayer stopped working. So we'll uh, we'll have a go. Same same uh, good old tracks. Good. Okay. So that's something we'll have a little think about when to get together to do that. We used to do that on Sunday nights. Maybe if that still works for people, let us know. Drop into the gaming channel on the Discord and let us know like what is a good time for that sort of thing. Um. I did complete one more achievement in that game not so long ago. I've only got one that I don't have now. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's that. I completed that one where you have to stop your car or something. It's a, it's a really weird one. <clears throat> <laughs> all those still work. Yeah, yeah. All those still work. So um, that's all cruise control. So there's a, I've got a backlog of stuff I need to write up about, like the OBS integrations that I use, mostly for my own aid memoir, but also, you know, we've randomly had snippets talking about them in the live streams, and it's not very easy for people to turn up that stuff. Right then, okay, so some gaming, and I think maybe Monday or Tuesday, I'll start on some Nick stuff. And I think between now and then, I'll try and get an update to QuickMU done and an update to Deb get done. And I'm going to speak to Phil and Nathan because I'm going to try and reorganize how I'm spending my time. And I may be looking for somebody to take on like the maintainership of Deb get. Um, but I feel I need to hand that over responsibly to somebody that's interested in carrying that forward. So we'll figure that out. So you need to get those updated and in a state where they can just maintain and then get into some Nick stuff. And Yannick, one of the reasons why I'm keen to do the whole Nix game is the developer environment story. You, you know how you've been enjoying M Machine Spawn. Makes that look like amateur hour because it is. <laughs> so for particularly for Flutter development, well not just Flutter, but 
well, any language, the the development environment story, the local dev story is amazing. It's so good. Um, and I want to get to this panacea where I just change to a directory and my developer environment is um, appropriate to that project, but it's completely isolated and ephemeral and it stands itself up by magic. It's, um, it's really great stuff. I've been reading about it. I know how it should work. I just don't know how to pull all the levers to make it work. And that's what I want to learn. So <clears throat> uh, that's one thing I want to learn to aid like but butterfly and flutter development because I obviously want to get into the flutter stuff because I've not been able to do that since we kind of said we we were going to start on that. And I think I'm going to at some point move the butterfly os image building over to nix os as well because i spend if we look at retro home as an example i spend a lot of time working on the tooling to produce the images which is a waste of time because that isn't actually the thing that i want to be making i want to be making the like retro home uh kiosk like bit the, all of the game emulation stuff actually working 60 percent of my time on the code that produces those images for the raspberry pi is a waste of effort and similarly the first task i undertook for ubuntu butterfly was to create a build system to stand up an ubuntu os image which is a waste of time because there are tools to do that better and nix os is one of them so i want to try and shed myself of uh, pointless activities where better tools already exist and what I'm learning is Nix has got all of these tools and it does all of it so and the other thing that I learned today which I really kind of liked is that this new approaching Nix called flakes don't worry about all these brand new words I don't fully understand it all myself yet but it will, will allow us to like have Git repositories of code that do all of these builds without actually having to land anything into upstream Nix OS until we're ready to do so. But it will all work in exactly the same way. So it's, there's some very appealing tooling there that I want to, want to get on board with. So Retro Home as a project, I think you may have seen that Takoff was in Discord and said, was I considering moving Retro Home over to NixOS? And absolutely yes. And I think that will be the proving ground of how to build operating system images of NixOS of the projects that I've got and learn that process and then apply it to other things. So long, long list of things there, but I'm definitely up for Nix. So. <clears throat> Let's have a look here where I saw an interesting question fly by. So King Egypt says, do you recommend the full Nix OS image or just installing the Nix package manager? So the approach I'm going to take is this. I'm going to be experimenting with Nix OS in a VM so I can learn the, Nix o the whole Nix OS story but initially I'm just going to have Nix installed on my Ubuntu system to see how far I can get because my understanding is that you can run Nix on any Linux and Mac OS and it works in much the same way and I think for like the developer tooling that I'm interested in I don't technically need to be running Nix OS so I'm going to start by learning some of this without having to switch out my operating system but i am absolutely positively going to transition over to nix os as my primary operating system and away from ubuntu at some point in this journey but i have things to learn before i can safely get to that point but the first thing i am going to be doing is i bought a new laptop which is this laptop here um and uh in fact we have the technology so let's use it so this is it this is a lenovo thinkpad z13 <clears throat> can i get it in looks like this 
Um, it's a thin and light. It's an all AMD. I've been using it today. I was out, out on the road today and I was using it for six hours and it's still got six hours battery life in it. I absolutely love it. This is currently running Ubuntu uh, because it came pre-installed with Ubuntu. Um, but, hmm, somewhere around here, I have some toys and I've misplaced them, which is unfortunate. Where did I put those? Anyway, I have another SSD for it. And what I'm going to be doing is replacing the SSD that's got Ubuntu on it. And I'm going to put a new SSD in and I'm going to move this machine over to Nix OS as its full time OS as the first PC that I do that with. And then use that as like, and I'll probably have to build and burn it multiple times. And I've seen so many interesting things you can do with Nix in terms of a Nix OS system um, that I just want in my life. So I'm going to go in really hard on this and try and learn as much as possible and exploit all of these toys. So if you're interested, uh, come along for the journey. And if you know better, come and <laughs> teach me. <laughs> is really my, uh, my mantra on this. <coughs> so Big Pod says that battery time is weak. What, 12 hours is weak? I think 12 hours is amazing. I think that's incredible that's um it's a full-blooded amd cpu in there it's, i think it's terrific <laughs> 20 plus hours do you actually do anything with it whilst it's on for 20 hours or you just <laughs> <laughs> yeah become I was actually using it. I was using it to write and build code today. I was using it to learn some nicks as it happens. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, but it's, it's better, right? This is, this is good, right? I wanted something that had, well, my other two laptops, my old laptops, this one here, which is heavy. This is the first thing, it weighs a ton. I mean, it really does weigh a lot. This one is um, the XPS 15 from 2016. And gosh, I'd forgotten how heavy it is. And it's a great laptop. I made some mistakes when I bought this. Actually, no, I didn't, not with this one. So when I bought this one, I just started working on doing the high DPI support for Ubuntu Mate. So that has got a UHD display in it. And it's also got discrete graphics and this is where this is a problem because uh those uhd displays they burn through your battery the discrete graphics burn through your battery so consequently even though i've um put a replacement battery in that about a year ago on battery i get about an hour and a half on that one and then to make matters worse the oh this one this one has 20 hours uh that's weak big pod this one can do about 40 hours but this is an arm laptop <laughs> um and then there's this one uh and this i made a mistake with this one is just all out muscle um and consequently i get about an hour and 20 minutes on this but it's a uh, xeon um cpu it's got a quadro gpu it's 4k it's got all of this stuff in it and consequently it just burns through the battery life and reasonably heavy so the whole point behind this one was ultra mobile decent battery and i think 12 hours is less more than a working day it's more than good enough so that's why I've gone with that. And it's got a great the trackpad in that Z13. This thing is astonishing. You'll see this come out in future live streams. I'm going to be doing a lot with it. I'll have it hooked up to the capture thing and we'll actually do stuff on it. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice machine, that ThinkPad Z13. And the, the, one of the things I learned whilst I was researching getting that laptop 
is the entire ThinkPad line, ThinkPad line from Lenovo, all have a Linux pre-install option. All of them have Ubuntu and a good number of them have Ubuntu or Fedora. So um, not too shabby. And the Christmas discounts were, I think it's 20% discount at Christmas. It was a lot of money off. So ordinarily, I would say that's probably too expensive for what it is that machine. But with the 20% uh, Christmas discount, it was actually all right. Uh, don't need TLP on it, King Egypt. Don't need TLP. So that one comes, because of the work I used to do at Canonical, I know how it works. Um, they can't sell these laptops pre-installed from the vendors unless they have the Energy Star rating. So consequently, all of the kernel and everything is uh, optimized and tuned to hit uh, the Energy Star certification. So there's no TLP on it. And TLP is not a panacea. You have to be careful with that. Uh, definitely on a device by device basis. Um, so yeah, when you when you buy the Dell or Dells, which is the XPS line, or Lenovo ThinkPad line pre-installed with Ubuntu, they come with the same um, energy guarantees uh, as the Windows equivalents, which is pretty great. But also, <laughs> as I learned extremely hard to do and that's why there's 50 engineers from Canonical in Taipei working on this stuff all the time. Anyway, but one of the reasons why the battery life is so good is that the um, efficiency on the AMD CPUs is, and GPU is really great. Right, yeah Dell doesn't offer Fedora, they just offer Ubuntu. Um, yeah, and I and one of the things I discovered today whilst I was poking around is there's a Nix repository which has like the hardware tweaks and quirks configurations for hundreds of different computers. So I was thinking I'd have to figure all of that out, but no, somebody has already put the Z13 in there and it's got all the necessary bits and pieces in there to optimize it. So I don't know if it's complete, but it's nice as a starting point. And if I find that there's something missing, I can contribute to it. So I need to figure all that stuff out and there's loads to learn and it's quite exciting. So that's gonna be coming up. So if you've ever been curious about Nix and Nix OS, um, me too, and I'm actually gonna get on and learn it. <clears throat> so, any last questions? If not, I'm probably gonna. Uh, so, there, there is a last question. So, um, Big Pod says, you, you say this laptop, you mean your laptop, is that right? Oh, yeah, 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 because you got a laptop last year, didn't you? That's right. Yeah. Uh, right, come on, brain. Let's see now what's going on here. Um, I'm just looking to say, I think we'll go here. I think we'll go here. So we're going to go and visit another Linux and open source streamer. They're always good value. They're doing, what are they doing at the moment? Some code looks like React Native. So we're going to head over there. So thank you all for coming, everyone. That was a semi-success. <laughs> Big pod, I'll be in touch. We're going to head over to CM Griffin now. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Maybe tomorrow, definitely sometime over the weekend. Loads next week. So bye for now. See you soon. <laughs>